everybody and welcome back to Alex Elliott Golf. Today we're at Panina Golf and Hotel Resort on the Championship Golf Course or on the 15th hole and we're around the green. Now the greens here are notoriously big at Panina so sometimes it can be between 30 and 40 yards from front to back. I found myself in the front bunker to a back flag so I've got roughly about a 45-50 yard bunker shot. Now that is the dreaded bunker shot. How, how often do we even hear the guys on tour talk about that bunker shot that they hate? that 40, 50 yard one, they're either catching it thin or duff. And that is the same thing for amateur golfers too. This is a dreaded bunker shot, card wrecker. We're gonna talk through why, in my opinion, people struggle with this bunker shot. And then we're gonna talk through bunker technique and club selection in order to improve your long bunker shots. So in my opinion, even for players that have a fantastic bunker technique, if they use too much loft, so I've got my 58 here, if they use a 58 or 60 or even sometimes 56 on this long bunker shot, it's reason why they come up short or thin their shots or fat tip. The margin for error in a bunker is very, very small. We've all seen, like imagine if you hit a shot on the beach, how hard it is to actually get a really nice centered contact. So in essence, we wanna hit a controlled duff on this golf shot. So if we did that with our 58 or 60, that's gonna take a lot of power and a lot of club head speed. So again, bringing in a lot of margin for error of the club ball coming up short or going longer target into trouble. So I want you to, on long bunker shots, throw out any lofted club. So I'm gonna throw out my 58, 56 and 60 so they can go. I want you to use either your pitching wedge or 9-9. And this might sound ridiculous, but for me, the less club or the less loft you can use, I should say, the easier this golf shot becomes. It's almost like, I call it like a controlled duff. You're playing exactly the same bunker shot. So you're making that nice bunker shot like you would use the 58 on a short one. You're playing exactly the same, all we're doing is changing the club. So we're not having to change technique, we're not having to hit it harder, we're not having to take a longer swing. Everything is staying the same for the short bunker shot, but we're changing the club. So I'm gonna play one with a pitching wedge, and I'm also gonna play it with a nine iron two to prove this point. So let's talk through some gentle setup reminders that you can use whatever club you're using. So no matter if it's a short bunker shot or long bunker shot, let's gently remind you of those setup points that I like to see. So firstly, let's place that golf club on the floor add some loft and then grip it. So we're gripping it with loft or on the face. From there, I want you to feel like you're gonna sit down into the shot. We're not gonna to stand to it normally. We're gonna feel like we sit down. So if this is our normal posture, I want you to feel like the butt of the club's further away from you and we're gonna sit down into the shot, point number two. Point number three is all about ball position. I want it to feel like it's gonna be a club head inside our left heel. So from here, we've got our three points, loft on the face, sit into the shot and the correct ball position. Now, the feeling I like to feel is, we've got this really nice adjust position here. I want you to feel like, can I recreate that impact? If I can, I've thrown the bounce underneath the golf ball, I've worked the club through the sand, it's gonna glide through the sand easier, and then we're gonna give the best chance of creating the good contact for the shot that I need. And that's whatever shot, or whatever bunker shot we're actually gonna hit. So if it's a short one or long one, the technique stays the same. Like I said before, we change the club. So we're gonna hit one with pitching wedge here, and I'm gonna hit one with nine iron as well, just to prove this to you. So, and this is why this technique is really simple, because we stay the same, we've got a constant in our technique. All we're doing is changing the club in order to make the longer bunker shot easier. So, let's get into those points. Loft on the face, sitting down into the shot, ball position roughly a club head inside my lead heel. Then from there, can I create the same picture at address? At impact so I've thrown that bounce underneath the golf ball I've not scooped and I've not driven into the sand a lot of people will drive into the sand on these long bunker shots and this is probably I think because of that again link back to the loft they've not got enough loft or they've got too much loft I should say and they drive into the sand let's now hit one with pitching wedge and nine iron also so point number one loft on the face then grip it sit into that shot a little bit more could ball a little further away from this than we usually have it and ball position a club head roughly inside our left heel. Now, my feeling here is, can I create the same picture at address that we've got here? Can I create that impact? I've then thrown the bounce underneath the ball, the club's then gonna glide through the sand and be the best chance of creating that nice strike in order to get the ball to the hole. So from this position here, with a long bunker shot, and this for me comes with people that use too much loft. They either try and scoop to get it up and far, or they will drive into the sand in an effort to kind of hit the ball harder, ensure that distance, and ultimately that's just gonna cause that fat shot or thin shot out on the golf course. So for me, that's gonna cause an, a multitude of errors, either scooping, causing those thins or fats, or then driving into the golf ball, also causing those fat shots. 
getting that leading edge digging in. So this is the reason why we can keep the same technique, same pace to our stroke, but change the club. And that's why it is key. We can create all the same setup, all the same feelings, but just change the club. And I keep going on about it, but it's really simple. Use your nine iron, use your pitching wedge, and it's very simple. So let's firstly hit this shot. Let's give this one a go. So same position, address, uh, impact. Get it to the hole. So there, really simple hit, nice contact, and the balls run up. That was finished about 15, 20 foot short, but you can see it was really easy for me to get it there. Let's now hit one with nine iron. So now I've got my nine iron, let's run through the same set of points. Loft on the face, sit down into the shot. Can I create the same position at address and at impact? So nicely gliding that club through the sand, I'm gonna skim it underneath the ball. Really simple. That one's finished about 10 foot short. And again, the same pace, same swing, really simple in order to get that ball 40 to 50 yards. I didn't have to get my 58 and really, really make sure I got the right contact, really make sure I got the right amount of sand. Again, it's very precise if you're gonna use 58. This 99 pitching wedge, you can almost hit that control duff towards the target. So simply, the three set of points we want are club, grip it with loft on, sit into the shot, and ball position inside our left heel, or club head roughly. Then from there, can I create the same picture at address, at impact, I'm not gonna drive with the hands, and I'm not gonna scoop. It's a really simple feeling. For your long bunker shots, keep the same technique, just change the club. Thank you for watching today's video on Alex Elliott Golf. Now, for a lot of people that have used a lot of loft in the past, these long bunker shots, this is gonna be a very different feeling through the sand. In your practice, evaluate really to test yourself. Try your pitching wedge, try your 9 iron, or even try your 8 iron and prove to yourself you don't need as much aloft as you think. If you've got a sound technique and that sound feeling of create the same picture addressing an impact, so throwing that bounce underneath the ball, you can really take advantage of a sound technique and make this long bunker shot easier. So for me, it doesn't become into a card wrecker for a double bogey, triple bogey. It definitely turns into something that, yes, it's not easy, but we can get out of it and give ourselves a chance of making par. If you've not already, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time on Alex Elliott Golf.